ladies and gentlemen, Lori Cardoza Moore with Proclaiming Justice to the Nations. And I want to bring an issue to your attention um, with regards to the new legislation or new curriculum that our federal government, President Biden, is pushing at, for civics in America's classrooms. And of course, he's providing a six um, funding of $6 billion to any state Department of Education who adopts this propaganda for our schools. And I want to just bring a couple of things to your attention because I find it interesting in the way he labels this legislation. Um, it is called the uh, Civics Secures Democracy Act, or CSDA. Now, what I find interesting about this is he's, a t he's targeting civics. Governor DeSantis, as you know, if you've been following PJTN for any amount of time, we were invited by Governor DeSantis's Department of Education to weigh in on the civic standards. And some of the um, recommendations that we made, and I'm saying PJTN as our team, our senior academic fellow and myself, some of the recommendations that we made with regards to what needed to be included in civic standards in the state of Florida, and those standards will require what the curriculum is, that the, the publishers, the textbook publishers, have to um, publish content that reflects the standards. And some of the important contributions that PJTN made to Florida's civic standards were requiring that the Hebrew Bible would be taught about the role that it played in the founding of our country, about the role that it played in the drafting of our founding documents, and the role that it played in our republic form of government. And this is critically important for our children to understand how America became the nation that it has, and the values, the Judeo-Christian values that, that our nation was founded upon. So the fact that the Biden administration is calling this bill the Civics Secures Democracy Act. Now, that word democracy, this is an interesting um, issue because we keep hearing everybody say, oh, we're a democracy. We are not a democracy, ladies and gentlemen. We are a republic. There is a difference in a republic and a democracy. Um, I also want to mention that it just so happens that it happens to be Republicans who are helping to endorse and push this propaganda. Now, ladies and gentlemen, again, remember the title, Civics Secures Democracy Act. Again, we are not a democracy. So what is Joe Biden pushing? Let me tell you. Let's read between the lines. He is pushing democracy. And we are not a democracy. He keeps repeating that over and over. And so do the talking heads on the television shows. It drives me nuts when I see journalists and reporters continue to, to repeat that narrative. We are a republic form of government. And I know that many of you have heard me talk about a new book that I have been researching. We are reaching out to the author, um, Eric Nelson. It is, the book is called The Hebrew Republic. And we are going to be working on, God willing, a documentary about this book to further educate Americans about why we're a republic, why we are not a democracy, and the history of how we came to be where we are. Um, this is, of course, I find this interesting that Joe Biden is pursu pursuing this with a $6 billion carrot for any school district that is willing to implement this curriculum or this program, um, which is very disturbing. Governor DeSantis has got the civics program down, and we are at PJTN going state by state to departments of education, to the governors. Um, I've spoken with um, candidates who are running for office, like um, uh, Lee Zeldin in New York. We've spoken with him about um, what's happening with education. So we're hoping that there's going to that we're going to be able to help him in getting in reviewing his civic standards as well. So anyhow, all that to say is Eric Nelson in the Hebrew Republic. I want to share with you um, some important information that he provides, but I want to encourage you to go and buy the book. It's on Amazon. 
let's see, it's the Hebrew, the Hebrew Republic by Eric Nelson. This is critically important for us to understand our history. We need a history lesson because I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we have not learned this. But let me share just an excerpt of what Eric Nelson wrote. Of course, this book centers on the 16th and 17th century revival of the Hebrew language. This is what was, what was going on in Europe. During this period, Christians began to regard the Hebrew Bible as a political constitution. Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? This was Christians began to regard the Hebrew Bible as a political constitution designed by God himself for the children of Israel. They also came to see the full array of newly available rabbinic materials as authoritative guides to the institutions and practices of this perfect republic. Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Our constitution, the, this form of government, this political constitution, was considered a perfect republic. He, he goes on to set, state that it is his argument, in brief, is that the, the Christian encounter with these materials transformed political thought along several important dimensions, which explains why the Hebrew Bible played such a major role in our founding. The first of these had, had to do with the idea of political science itself. Before the middle of the 17th century, European political thought was characterized by the complete hegemony of what we might call constitutional pluralism. Following Aristotle and other classical authors, political theorists acknowledged the existence of several correct constitutional forms. Now listen to this. Monarchy, aristocracy, and polity, later called republican government. Did you hear that? Let me repeat it again. The existence of several correct constitutional forms, including monarchy, aristocracy, and polity, called republican government, which they distinguished from the corresponding incorrect or degenerate forms, tyranny, oligarchy, and democracy. Let me read that back to you, ladies and gentlemen. Again, following Aristotle and other classical authors, political theorists acknowledged the existence of several correct constitutional forms, which were monarchy, monarchy aristocracy, and polity, later called Republican government. That's why we're a republic. We're a Republican government, which they distinguished from the corresponding incorrect or degenerate forms, tyranny, oligarchy, and democracy. Although each theorist often had a view about the best constitution, either the best absolutely or the best under particular circumstances, it was taken for granted that each of the correct forms was legitimate and even desirable under particular circumstances. In the middle of the 17th century, however, we find Republican authors making a new and revolutionary argument. They now began to claim that monarchy per se is an illicit constitutional form and that all legitimate constitutions are Republican. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why when the United States started out, we had one party. We evolved into one party, Republican. Democracy, or the Democrats, came later. So, ladies and gentlemen, please, please, please order this book, Eric Nelson, The Hebrew Republic. I have been saying for the longest time that we are a Hebraic, um, Judeo-Christian value culture, society, and there's a reason why. And there's a reason why that Joe Biden is pushing civics that, that uses the term democracy because we are not a democracy. And in a way, he is. It says that he is pushing this Civics Secures Democracy Act because he's trying to secure democracy. But we're not a democracy. We are Republican until we understand the difference and why we need to uphold the republic, not a, a democracy, 
until we understand that, we're going to struggle with where we are. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you, and for our state legislators and our congressmen and senators, those of you who are on my mailing list, you get these emails, you, you tune in, I want to thank you. I want to thank those of you who respond to me and thank me for the information that I share um, because it helps you in doing your job. We need you to stand up for our republic. We need for you to stand against a democracy. And this legislation, this Democracy Act, by Joe Biden is fraudulent. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are members of PJTN, wherever you are, you need to be making sure that this is not adopted in your state legislature. You need to contact your state department of education. You need to contact your state representatives, especially the members of the House and Senate education committees. You need to let them know we don't want a dime for this, this fraudulent Civic Secures Democracy Act. We want what Governor DeSantis has been doing in the state of Florida all this time. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're in Florida, send a note to Governor DeSantis. Let your state legislators know how grateful you are, how proud of them you are, because Florida is leading the country when it comes to education. So God bless you all. And that's just a little tidbit. And, you know, I think I might come back with some more because I'm reading, I'm telling you, this book is absolutely fabulous. You need to get it. You need to read it. You need to share it with your family and friends. And God willing, if you are interested in helping us fund this documentary on this book, we are going to be reaching out to the author um, to see if we can get him to um, work with us. Of course, at least do an interview, but talk about this issue because we are confused as a country. We are not a democracy. We are a republic form of government. And our founding fathers were studying the Bible. They were studying the Torah. They were studying the writings of the sages, the Hebrew sages, during this time in order to understand how to develop a government on earth that is reflected by the God that is in the Bible. So anyhow, God bless you all. Keep up the great work. And remember, this is summer and PJT, PJTN needs your financial support. I can't do this without you. You guys are awesome. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your encouraging emails. But we need your financial support to continue to do the work that we're doing. And God willing, we are going to change these school districts across the country. But that comes because you're standing with me on the front lines of this all-encompassing war. So God bless you, and until next time, I'll see you soon.